Steven, let's kick things off here with a very interesting division, in my opinion, because I do think this thing is pretty wide open when we go kind of top to bottom here outside of the team that we'll kick things off with in the Washington Commanders. I do not think that this team is one of the teams that I'm going to be looking at as a real contender for this division or even a real contender just in the NFL this year in general. I do not like Carson Wentz. If you were listening to any of the content that we made last year, you well know that I'm not a Carson Wentz guy. Steven has known for a long time now that I am not a Carson Wentz guy. I don't think that this was an upgrade whatsoever by the commanders making this move to acquire Carson Wentz. And so for me, I just kind of look at this and I say, what's really better or different about this team, Steven? I just don't really get it. I mean, I understand that the defensive line is still going to be very, very good, if not one of the you know top three to five units in all of the NFL, anytime that you've got Chase Young, Montez Sweat, you know, Jonathan Allen might actually end up being good. So there is that, but past that one unit, I'm just, I'm perplexed as to how this team is, is going to win a bunch of games this year. There are a few things I like more at this point in the NFL than trashing Carson Wentz. I think he <laughs> is a terrible teammate. I think he makes excuses for his bad play and has zero accountability. There have been a ton of reports since his days in Philadelphia to back that up. It is really shocking to me to see so much public criticism even from anonymous sources about a quarterback to now have it be a second consecutive team with the Indianapolis Colts some of the stories that were coming out of Indianapolis about them just being completely done with this guy after they were a pretty good team for most of the year with Carson Wentz it, it was like day one of the offseason we're done with this guy we don't want him in our building and so, so there's a lot of, I think, non-football reasons for that. But let's focus on the actual talent and what we've seen from Carson Wentz on why I am seriously considering just taking a double unit bet on under eight wins for the commanders this season. Washington's quarterback situation the past couple of years we know has not been good. It's been a mishmash of replaceable level quarterbacks, backups. We've got the Taylor Heineke experience last year. Washington ranked dead last in average depth of target over the past two years with those quarterback deficiencies. They wanted to get the ball out quickly and they wanted to get it out near the line of scrimmage so that they could have more accurate passes and hopefully move the chains. Well, Carson Wentz ranked dead last in accuracy on passes thrown within five yards of the line of scrimmage over the last two years. Taylor Heineke was actually third best. So he's not going to help them there. So what about deep balls? Well, Wentz ranked dead last in accuracy on passes thrown more than five yards down the field in the past two years. So what about other areas? Is there a place where Carson Wentz might be able to be better than what the Washington quarterbacks have done over the past few years, considering they gave up a second and a third round pick to get this guy? In the red zone, he was 24th in EPA per drop back. In the red zone, he had close to an 11% uh 11% rate of either a sack or an interception. That was one of the 10 worst in the league. And on third and fourth downs overall, he was 29th in accuracy. So Matt, what exactly is Carson Wentz going to do for this team? Yeah, I, I know. think it I mean, could be I, worse with him. Yeah, if, if we, if we want to try to find a positive here, just because of this division that they play in, they do at least, you know, have the sixth easiest schedule as we head into the NFL season. So again, we're trying to find some positive to talk about here. They did re-sign Terry McLaurin to a long-term deal. So he's not going to be disgruntled in the, you know, for this team there, which he was doing kind of the hold in thing and where he was looking for a new deal. They did take another wide receiver in John Dodson in um, from Penn state in the first round. So you do at least have a couple of playmakers there for, you know, for Carson Wentz, if we wanted to go that, that route. But I mean, it's just for me, all the stats that you just rattled off for Carson Wentz, it's kind of, to me, we know who this guy is, you know, and I don't know why we are continuing to try and look for this needle in a haystack of, of some sort of upside here for this guy. I think it is a, I think the upside here is a middling year. And I think the more likely scenario is a, you know, bottom half to bottom third type year. And I think the 
I think the you know worst case scenario here is a bottom five year for all starting quarterbacks in the NFL. And I know that seems crazy to say when we have so many young quarterbacks, we have so many guys that are considered to be fairly garbage out there. But I, I do believe that if this thing goes off the rails with an offensive line that is, again, could be good, but could be bad. It's kind of a middling offensive line as well. So if some of these guys play, you know, higher than where we kind of have them projected, then certainly this could be a decent unit. If this, if some of these guys play below where we have them projected, this could actually be one of the bottom third units in all the NFL. So I think we have enough body of work here for me to look at this team. That is the best you can find 80 to one to win the Super Bowl. If we're talking about to win the NFC East, the best you can find is a five, a plus five seventy five which is actually third best. It's it, the giants are longer. We'll talk about the giants here in a second. I'd rather have a, I'd rather have a giants ticket, Steven on to win this division than I would a, a commander's ticket all day long. Oh, without question. And we'll get into the, the giant stuff in a little bit here, but I'm, I'm on I'm just dumbfounded how a team that won seven games last year and added a quarterback that statistically is not an improvement and their win totals are higher now. You can get plus money right now on the commanders that have the same number of wins or fewer than they had last year, which doesn't make any sense to me. This team is not better because they have Carson Wentz. No. Um, and and if you look at these projections at Football Outsiders, right? So they 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 simulate the season a million times, <laughs> and and in those simulations this commanders team has either 0 to 5 wins 21% of the time or 6 to 8 wins 42% of the time so 63% of the time in the 1 million simulations that football outsiders did this team finishes with 0 to 8 wins 63% of the time is what you're getting out of this commanders squad right there so i mean it just for me i'm with you it's it's almost like i feel like if I'm going to play a, a bet, which I'll, I'll, I'll fully admit, I don't have anything in on the commanders as we sit right now. I'd almost be looking at an all under. So I kind of think yeah. if they're going to be bad, they're going to be real bad. Right. And so I'd almost rather take an alt under where I'm getting even pl like big plus money on them to finish even worse than, than the line is currently set. Yeah. The, the lowest you can get on the standard win total right now is under seven and a half at plus 100 at bet MGM to your point that 63% for the football outsiders, uh, between zero and eight wins. If you convert that to a money line, it's minus 170 for zero to eight wins. And you can get under eight wins at minus 120 right now. So if mm -hmm. they hit the eight, it's, there's some push equity there, but right. You know, one final point on Carson Wentz, because I love trashing this guy. I think he's just <laughs> a complete phony. Uh, if you recall back when Philadelphia was going through the divorce with their coaching staff and then ultimately trading Carson Wentz, there are some articles that came out from anonymous coaches on the fired staff. And one of the biggest things they said was that Wentz couldn't get off the first read or worse, he came up with excuses in the meeting rooms why he didn't throw it to the first read when that read was there and open. And the stats back that up, too, on, on late down situations where you're trying to move the chains. On third downs in the past two years, he's ranked 33rd in percentage of dropbacks ending with a sack or an interception. Now you talk about Sam Darnold seeing mm -hmm. ghosts. Carson Wentz sees ghosts, too. So, again, like I, I didn't see much improvement on the rest of this roster. I don't see Carson Wentz as an improvement at the most important position. Therefore, I'm I'm looking for unders on on win totals on this team, and prop I I'm shocked. I can't believe that they're a four point favorite over the ja Jaguars week one. As long as Trevor Lawrence gets out of the preseason healthy, that's that's going to be an auto bet for me week one. The Jags plus four, plus three and a half.